Welcome back to the Shepherd's Evening, the place where we give thanks to God, recalling His unfailing love to us today as we prepare to rest in His promises tonight, and we give thanks for His salvation each and every night of our lives. We do that by getting into God's Holy Word, and tonight we're looking at Genesis 30, verse 1, where it's written, Give me children and where I shall die. To help understand it, we're using Charles Spurgeon's Evening by Evening. Here's what he says. The cry of Rachel for physical children should be more than matched by the believer's longing for spiritual children. Our great object in living is to glorify God, and we mainly achieve this end by the winning of souls. We must see souls born unto God. If we don't win souls, we should mourn as the farmer who sees no harvest after the labor, as the fisherman who returns to his cottage with an empty net after being at sea, or as the hunter who has roamed in vain over hill and dale, but come home with nothing. Ours should be Isaiah's language, uttered with many a sigh and groan. Who has believed what they heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? As ambassadors of peace, we shouldn't cease to weep bitterly until the sinners weep for their sins. If we intensely desire to see others believing in the Lord Jesus, we must act in accordance with the principle and pattern of Scripture. We must depend entirely upon the Spirit of God. Don't we fail in many of our efforts because we practically, though not doctrinally, though not doctrinally, ignore the Holy Spirit. His place as God is on the throne, and in all our enterprises, He must be the beginning, the middle, and the end. We're the instruments in His hand, and nothing more. We must be, most of all, clear upon great soul-saving doctrine, the doctrine of the atonement. He made him <clears throat> he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God the simple truth that Christ died in the place of sinners gives rest to the conscience by showing how God can be just and the justifier of whoever believes this is the great net of gospel fishermen. The fish are drawn or driven in the right direction by other truths, but this is the net itself. We must declare the love of God in Christ Jesus, always keep his abounding mercy and connect it to his unerring justice. Never exalt one attribute at the expense of another. Let boundless mercy be seen in calm consistency with stern justice and unlimited sovereignty. Believer, are you longing to see spiritual offspring? Don't let the sun set on this day without imploring God to show himself strong in this regard. Beseech him, give me children or I shall die. There's an editor's note in my translation saying that this meditation replaces Spurgeon's original devotional on Isaiah 54.12. This was adapted from Charles Spurgeon's Lectures to Students, page 375. As I meditate upon Scripture, give me children or I shall die, and I meditate upon what Spurgeon wrote, I hear many things coming to the fore. I have children of my own, and truly my life would not be the same without them. And I think about what it means for God to want children, His children, all these souls to be saved. And I think often, not about what we do when we fail to go out, but where we go out wrongly. Spurgeon said something early on here, and he talked about how every sinner should weep for their sins. That's not a comfortable thing to say today when so much of the churches are putting out, all we're here to do 
discomfort you, to make you feel better. There's truth that God does want us to be comforters. But is that all we're supposed to do? Is it even the first thing that we're supposed to do? I do find that Jesus goes out and loves and comforts those without preaching doctrine first. But I also know that to believe in him, we have to repent and be forgiven. You see, that's the real crux, isn't it? God is merciful. God is good. God loves, not based on our worthiness, but on his righteousness. Yet for us to truly be a follower of Christ, it isn't a matter of believing in an easy Jesus who just comes to fulfill our every desire and make us feel good. It comes in recognizing that he is sovereign and holy and we are not. It comes from recognizing that his holiness and goodness are absolute and we're broken and sinners. You have to understand that so that you can truly say, I need you to be Lord in my life. I need your forgiveness, for only you can give it to me, holy God. Brothers and sisters, don't lament that people weep over their sins, for that is the point when they have recognized that they need something else, that their own ways which have brought them into sin have led them to this poor estate, and that in God, there is something new. See, that very moment when they're weeping is your opportunity to be used as a tool of God, to be his hand that reaches their lives with the story of salvation, the message of grace, the action of the Holy Spirit. So brothers and sisters, as you draw, get ready to lay yourself down for the night and rest in the Lord, truly ask him, Lord, bring your children to me. Give me children or I shall die. Ask him, send me your children, holy God, for I want to be used by you to share the message of your love, a message which can redeem the sinner. Meet them in their brokenness. Don't say they're not broken, but affirm the truth that you too were once broken and you're healed and loved by a God more profound than any we could imagine a God who welcomes the sinner, heals them, and calls them children of God. Brothers and sisters, I want to thank you for being here with me tonight. I want to thank you for sharing my hope and my faith in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. As you prepare to rest your head this evening, give it all to God. Empty out all your worries and desires. Focus on Him alone. Trust in Him and then come back in the morning, rising not under a beautiful golden fiery globe out there, but rising to a new sunrise under a glorious God, the Prince of Peace, under Jesus' reign in your life. There's no better place to be. This is Motorcycle Pastor saying, I'll see you in the morning. <laughs>